Uh, hey there, everybody. This is uh, Ryan with uh, Silvertone Analytics and um, partner John David. Uh, today we're going to be talking about competitive intelligence, basically assessing where do you sit in the marketplace, whether you're selling products or services, local business, or selling internationally. So some of the topics we're going to cover today include an overview of what competitive intelligence is, as well as how it relates to the other three core pillars of business analytics. Uh, and then uh, I'll kind of jump in on some marketing implications of uh, competitive intelligence. And then John David's gonna talk more specifically to sort of the financial, supply chain, operational implications. So the definition of competitive intelligence is the analysis of an organization's offerings compared to the existing competitors' offerings. So we like to break this down into two major dimensions. So we look at feedback analysis, so what are people saying about your product versus what are people saying about your competitor's product, and price differential analysis. So are you selling your product at a higher or a lower price? So what does the landscape look like? So when someone Googles, say you're a computer salesman, when they start looking for a computer on Google, they are, they are flooded with all of your competitors. So selling through Apple, Office Depot, Dell, Walmart, and you can see they've got all their prices listed out and also their feedback as well. And this is just like a digital representation, right? I mean, you could walk into a Best Buy and see the same things, you know, the same like kind of different pricing structures, things like that. But because so much of commerce takes place online nowadays, including, you know, even buying a $2,300 laptop computer or, or desktop computer, um, you know, it's, it's one of the most kind of feedback rich environments that we can, we can tap into. All right, so I'm gonna quickly go over the four pillars that we like to look at when it comes to business analysis. So we look at marketing analytics, sales analytics, and those we wanna scale up as much as possible. And then on the other side, we look at supply chain analytics, which we want to eliminate as much waste as possible. Those three pillars make up the internal data sources. And if you look at the bottom half of the screen, the ex external data sources, competitive intelligence, is what we're going to be delving into next. If you get that. So as we mentioned earlier, competitive intelligence is broken down into price differential analysis. So are you priced higher or lower than your competitors? And the key here is if you have a superior product, you can get away with a higher price, but you really need to be wary of when you are pricing higher than your competitors, but they are offering a superior product because your sales are going to start to drop off dramatically. And feedback analysis, analysis can actually kind of influence that as well like we can see you know if if your ratings for your products are higher or lower like if you have like a four or five star review uh, and your competitor is consistently at five stars or maybe they're at three stars you can you can do like some quick just kind of ad hoc uh, analysis to see just level to level you know if you're if you and your competitors are doing well or if you guys are um, if, if one of you is outperforming the other So here's a sample dashboard that we put together that looks into both of these components. So we're drilled down on, this is a fictional item, item K123B. So if you look at that, you can see the competitive intelligence. Your price is $15 higher than your competitor's price, which when you're selling at $100, that's 15%. Uh, your feedback rating is two, two your competitor's is three. So that's an opportunity there's an opportunity for you to increase sales volumes by starting to adjust your pricing around that and then you can see the pricing distribution and then what's nice about web scraping feedback analysis is that we've got all of the reviews and we can start to see what is recurring over and over again so if there is a specific defect that's wrong then you can start to inform your supply chain about that do you want to show this in Tableau? Uh, sure. Just because we can toggle between the products. Yep, 
Yeah, so this dashboard will show you the interactivity. So at the, the bottom t half of the screen, we were getting into sales, but now this is the competitive component of it, and Ryan's uh, talking between the two. So pay attention kind of to this area as we switch over. You'll see our price, the competitor's price, what the differential is. So in this case, we are priced 4% lower than the competition. And our feedback is that we're at a five-star average and the com competition is at a three-star average. So the total feedback differential is pretty significant um, that we are 40% better than the competition on ratings and we're 4% lower on price. So a simple reduction right. here is that <clears throat> maybe we should be matching, at the very least matching our competitor's price because we're going to have a much higher propensity to for the customer to buy from us um, given right. that we have a, a superior product. And the unknown here is you have no idea how price sensitive your customer base is. So we're saying you can go up into matching if you have a superior product, but what we don't know is if you go a penny above your competitors, what percentage of potential sales are going to be going to your competitor just because they care much more about price than quality. We'll just jump back into this. Yeah. That works better. <laughs> so here's, basically it's just reiterating what we just went over, but more visually. So when feedback comes in from your customers, if it's negative, that is something that you're going to want to send to your supply chain manager, especially if it's something that's coming up over and over again, like, hey, these screws are cheap and the metal is stripping, so I've got a bunch of screws stuck in my door right now. So if that is happening over and over again, you're going to want to tell your supply chain manager about that and say, hey, we've got to switch up vendors for this because we don't have a, a quality product. But on the other flip side of that is if it's positive, then you're going to want to send that to your marketing manager because that's your unique value proposition right there. This, the positive things that keep it coming up over and over again. You know, like, oh, this, this specific, let's see, what would be a good example? Um, trying to think. Oh, this sink has a very eye-catching tone to it. Like with, it's a copper sink, and it's much more visually striking than all their different competitors. So that's something that you would want to have in your ad copy. Yep, love it. And then here's your price differential analysis. So when you're the quality leader, you should have a higher price. That is that is the logic there. But when you're not the quality leader, you need to be very price sensitive. And it's very important that if you don't lead in quality that you keep on top of your competitors' prices because their decisions have a very strong impact on your sales volumes. Absolutely. All right, so now uh, I'm going to take a little bit of time and talk through the marketing implications. Uh, we've already kind of hit on some of these, but uh, just to kind of bring it home, I wanted to ask the audience, you know, which of you, which of these would you buy just based on these this high level information, given that the uh, the price is essentially the same. Will be the assumption here. Uh, would you go with the one that has six reviews and mostly positive, or one review that's only two stars? I would argue in most cases people would end up choosing the item on the left given that these two items are very similar. So just kind of talking through the impacts of like just having less for, or a lower amount of and lower quality ratings on your products, right here we can see that uh, around June uh, 16th or 17th, I'm sorry, no, that's uh, June 20th or something along those lines. Um, this particular product line had one one star review and then actually John David could you jump in here yeah so what, what this what this um, dashboard is showing is the impact of a one star review on sales volumes so what you notice here is that there is a one star review in late June but we've layered in sales volumes on the same axis you see virtually no trend in sales at all there no there no there's no trend but so you look at the bottom third of the screen 
there's a bunch of reviews and there's a bunch of high quality reviews for this product. So once you're established and you're on the marketplace, one one star review is not going to have. That might just be a crazy person that's you know, ranting and raving about their own problems, you mm-hmm. know. But if you hit the next slide, so this is the impact of a one star review on a product that has no reviews at all. And what you see here is that in early September they have their first review. Unfortunately, it's a one star review, and you see a tank in sales. And I also wanted to point out that what's happening is that 2017, the orange line, is starting to trend upwards above 2016. So you can see week 20, it's significantly higher. Week 26, or 28, it's, it's growing even more than the previous week. And week 36, it has the highest peak. Unfortunately, during that high sales volume time, we got our first review and it was a one-star review. So then sales just dropped off and now they're below the 2016 benchmark for the rest of the time. So this speaks uh, a little bit to the importance of obviously just, especially for new product lines or product lines that don't have reviews, <clears throat> doing everything you can to market to those users to uh, ensure that they're getting, um, that you're getting, you're beefing up those reviews for that time that you get that crazy person or you get that person who's just extremely dissatisfied with the product. Um, you know, the, the beauty of competitive intelligence is that you can actually monitor these trends. You can look at both your products and your com- competitors' products to see if there's any of these sharp increases or decreases so you can quickly diagnose the issue. Um, and we monitor across a variety of platforms, Facebook, Google, uh, Amazon, if you sell products, Yelp, if you're kind of more of a service-based business. So you can do a lot to sort of, you know, very quickly, as in potentially within like 24 hours, diagnose uh, some some sharp drop or change in performance. <clears throat> it also allows you to respond quickly, and we recommend empathetically. You want to try and connect with that user as quickly as possible, show others that might be looking at reviews that you're responsive, and, you know, you may ultimately save that relationship, get that person to change their review if the response or the interaction that they have with you is positive as well. Um, again, focus on a heavy post-purchase uh, marketing effort to customers and ask them for reviews. Uh, I think this is the kind of thing you should do throughout the lifetime of a product line or service or different business, not just um, at the beginning of a new product launch, but certainly uh, it's important when you have items out there that uh, you know are, are good selling items that you should focus on getting good positive ratings to go along with it. And then finally, when you get positive reviews, when you get you know good testimonials on your products or services, tell people on social media about it. Say like, hey, you know, give a shout out to the person who gave you the positive review. So celebrate your positive reviews um, by featuring them on social media and other channels. So kind of like our previous ex- uh, exercise, I'd ask which of these products would you buy, assuming that they're all very similar. If you're noticing the same thing that we did, there's some pretty significant inconsistencies with across all of these products. And while some of them may vary slightly in size and width, um, this is actually a personal experience. My uh, uh, former business partner and I ran an eco-friendly home decor business selling these exact wood stools. And the main manufacturer of the products did not dictate pricing did not dictate minimum advertised pricing or a suggested retail price so it was basically like whatever we wanted to sell it for we could sell it for the problem is is that you know we wanted to sell it for the highest price and a lot of other companies kind of came in and started under undercutting those prices down you know something that's seen here at $216 on overstock can also be purchased for $97 on house which is a pretty substantial difference in price and when given this number of options, I think most people would probably buy the cheapest product if that's what they wanted. The problem is that sellers often lose when you're trying to compete on price. I would say that monitoring can help ensure that you're priced at least at or above your market value. So you want to, you don't necessarily want to be the cheapest person, especially in sort of an unregulated marketplace. 
Um, but kind of to John David's point earlier, when we were looking at that diagram of uh, the price differential analysis, you know, if your ratings are a little bit higher and your price is a little bit lower, you should definitely adjust up to at least meet the market value, if not pricing yourself slightly above the market value. Uh, if you do see someone running uh, by mo through monitoring, you can also find out if your competitor is running a flash sale or something along those lines. That may be an opportunity to do some kind of short-term promotion, but you know, make sure you don't devalue uh, the price of your product in doing that same process. And then again, having higher reviews, more reviews, higher quality product can allow you to price yourself up above the competition. And all of this, you know, is certainly uh, made prevalent through your marketing materials. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the financial implications. So the big one here is you can optimize your margin. Who knows how much you're leaving on the table as far as margin goes. So in the left side, you have your product. It's priced at $2.99. And your competitor's offering it at $3.50. So this is 51 cents difference as far as price goes. So if you hit next. So now we layer in another dimension of data and that is feedback. So if you have a five star feedback and they have a 3.5, you're the quality leader in this space. So you have a little bit of leeway here. You have a 42.8% better rating than they do. So there's that 51 cents that is just left on the table. That's a 17% under-optimized margin. So, <laughs> Oops, sorry. so when um, this may not seem like a huge amount, but if you're starting to sell in volumes of hundreds of thousands or millions of units, this 51 cents all of a sudden becomes hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So let us know if you guys have any questions. Yep. Excellent. Thank you.